Are you gonna get anything? I don't know. They're pretty good croissants here. I was here last. Oh yeah? Yeah, Who'd you go with? It was just me and Rachel. Just had a croissant and coffee. Oh. You seem to be hanging out with her a lot lately. You're not allowed to hang out with friends now or something? Is there something going on with you? Well... Maybe if you didn't freak out every time... Like, I told you anything. I have to, like, watch my words around you or something. This is the... You know what? I really don't want to talk about it right now. Look, I have to go to the bookstore. Will you come with me? Please? Yeah. Sorry. It's all gonna be for you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and take this one. You sure? It's a good book. You'll enjoy. If you don't enjoy it, you can bring it back. When Rando called, I realized I hadn't heard from him since the incident with my former business partner, Captain Jimmy Harlow. I was so happy to hear from Rando until he told me that Jimmy had broken out of the pen and was looking for me. Apparently he had blamed me for the past decade he was incarcerated. Rando thought that the best thing to do would be to meet up and devise a plan to steer clear of Jimmy. I agreed. I took my gun just in case. You never know what kind of situation a girl like myself would get into. We agreed to meet at the old gazebo, the same way that we had done so many years ago. Randall would be waiting for me, playing his mandolin, and I would follow the sound. Randall had always been a good man. I knew I could trust him. It felt stupid not to have talked to him until now, 
but I had been in so much pain and denial after the incident. I wanted nothing to do with the others around me. It was so nice seeing Rando for the first time in years. Immediately, Rando started apologizing for the events that were about to unfold. Yet, little did I know that Jimmy had gotten a hold of Rando, held him captive, and forced him to call me. As I realized this had all been a trap, trouble reared its ugly head. An encounter with Jimmy is just what I had feared most in life, afraid of what he would do to me. I reached for my gun, but not fast enough. It only made things worse. When his brother Robert, who had also been the love of my life, was tragically killed during the unfortunate London job, Jimmy was captured. Although Jimmy laid all the blame on me, it wasn't my fault. He felt that the pain of losing the love of my life was not enough punishment. His plan was simple. He would kill Rando and force me to watch, just as he watched his brother die. And die in your arms, just like I had to do with my brother. Click. Bang. Jimmy's gun misfired and Rando acted quickly on his feet, hitting Jimmy in the head with his mandolin. I have never seen such a blow from a mandolin before, and I had seen a few in my time. I knew that Jimmy would never stop hunting us. Every pulse in my body wanted to kill him. But lucky for Jimmy, Rando somehow convinced me not to kill him. Killing him would not solve anything. Let's go. In fact, Let's go. I would yeah. have taken a step towards no, becoming like Jimmy if I would have pulled the trigger myself. I took one final look at him. Jimmy, you lucky son of a bitch. We had fled before Jimmy had a chance to awaken. And so we walked off with the past behind us. We eventually found out that after Jimmy had fallen, he had hit his head on the ground and lost any memory that he had had with Rando and I. I was finally at peace with the thought that this could be all over now. What I had learned is that in any relationship, the fault can't fall on only one person. There we stood, eye to eye, bullet to bullet. Our fates were sealed. I knew she had the upper hand, but this was one devil's gambit I wasn't planning on walking away from. I could see the hate in her eyes. She knew I had her money. I knew I had her attention.